All right. Well, uh, it's been a minute. Uh, I've been a little bit busy here lately since uh, uh, the farm show. I got to meet uh, Back Farm, Logan from Back Farm. So let me get out of the wind here. And I got to meet uh, Sam from uh, uh, Kentucky, uh, Kentucky, Kentucky Farmer 123, I believe it is. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I love getting to meet them. I got to meet uh, Farmhand Mike, Mike Les from that YouTube channel. Uh, he was a really nice guy. I was really glad to meet him. Uh, so yeah, I just been busy since uh, since I talked to y'all last. It's been about three weeks or two or three weeks, somewhere like that. But I thought I would uh, go ahead and give y'all another video. I've been meaning to do it for the past week and it just hasn't happened yet. But anyways, I'll give y'all an update on what's been going on around here and uh, what's to come. Uh, anyways, right here is uh, my grandpa's uh, Femco 175 gallon or 200 gallon sprayer that uh, it's been sitting over in the barn. Uh, we use it to spray pastures every once in a while, and the reason we don't ever use it much is because the leg got broke off of it because for him go, from him going over terraces and not picking the lift up. Uh, it's his own fault, and we broke it off. But uh, I, I managed to get time not just too just not too long ago and welded another one together and threw it on there. And another thing, uh, this frame is bent. He put it on a trailer and didn't strap it down or didn't strap it good or I don't know what he done. But anyways, it fell off tractor or trailer going down the road and bent all this. But other than that, it's a good sprayer. Um, there was a couple of fittings messed up on the end. I had to put a new fitting on. It's a 30 foot boom, so I wanted to get it going for uh, pasture spraying. Uh, Excuse me. And uh, there was a couple of fittings broke. I had to fix it. I don't know which one of us broke. This fitting here was broke. This uh, little uh, spacer fitting one, it goes into a three quarter and then goes down to a half. Uh, then that fitting down there was pulled out because the hose was too short and every time you'd pick it up, it would strip it out, picked it up too high. Sorry for all the wind noise. It's been, uh, it's kind of windy today. And today is, uh, Wednesday, because I got church. Yep, Wednesday. Uh, Max Ferguson fixed the fuel gauge. I wound up putting another one on there. But uh, you can see it works. Let me turn the lights on here. See? So everything works there, so I'm glad to have fuel gauge again. Uh, Dad built the, this is the uh, uh, HS2000, uh, or 3000, I mean, uh, that Dad just built. Uh, we just, uh, we needed a bigger tank. This is a 40 gallon uh, to go on the back for spraying middles. Um, this is a Murray with a 18 horse in the Hydrostat. Uh, the HS stands for Hydrostat Sprayer. Uh, the other one is a SM2 mount, a SM2000, which is Sprayer Mower 2000. But this is this is the new one. This is new and improved. Uh, a little bit better. Uh, what I wanted to do is we would put a valve on here to uh, run the spray arm, but this one came with different valves here already. I wanted to put the valve here and make me a little control box, but dad didn't want to, so he done it the way he wanted to because it's his mower. But anyways, oh, excuse me. Uh, so yeah, this thing is built. Uh, we used a different, instead of the RV skirting, we used this, we had to lay it around. Uh, you can adjust it up and down, and it's all set to where you can spray. Uh, so, Anyways, uh, Dad had to put out dormant oil, and he, I uh, can't remember what he put out in the peace trees, but that's what this is for, for spraying on the peace trees. This thing here has got a bungee strap on it, and it's rubber coated and taped and all that. And what it does is he drives along, and it hits a tree, and then it sprang back and sprays around every tree. Uh, it kills everything from five foot from the, from the center of the, five foot from the tree to make our drive roads. Uh, 2950 put a new seat on it. Bought that at the farm show. Uh, really nice people over at KM Manufacturing. If you hadn't bought a seat from them, they got a lot of good seats. And this one here is a really nice seat. Uh, this one I believe was 380 plus tax at the show. And they gave uh, free shipping and 20% off at the show. Uh, KM got armrest for it. And it's just, it's a really good setting seat. Uh, it fits this John Deere with the slant, everything. 
Uh, he's got that bucket in there because we got a cat that keeps sitting in his seat and he don't like that. This is the original SM2000 that we built last year. Uh, this is a different mower. We swapped everything over because this one's hydrostat. The other one was gear. The hydrostat makes it easier. Turn around at the end of the rows. We bought three of these things for pretty cheap, so we swapped it over. Uh, this one's a little different. You can slide it side to side and up and down, and it only has a 15-gallon tank. We can do, I think we need 30 gallons to do an acre, so that's why Dad upgraded because he kept having to fill up with this. Uh, another thing I got uh, while I was at the Savannah Farm Show, which y'all hadn't seen, I won this little sprayer here. It's a little full top sprayer. Ain't it cute? Uh, but anyways, uh, like to thank, thank the guys over at Agri Supply. I don't know if I showed this to you or not. I can't remember for sure. But anyways, the guys over at Agri Supply, really good guys. Uh, I've really gotten to know them over the few shows, but I won that from them. They weren't in no trouble with getting it home and everything. But I'm going to use this for spraying fences, and uh, that's what I plan on using it for. Uh, but it'll work. it should work good for that. But uh, anyways, uh, uh, like the, another thing we got from the Yitter folks, uh, they gave, they, did, they ain't never heard of this kind of planter, which is Matermac. Uh, I think I've seen before. Uh, we built this uh, extra uh, toolbar for it because this was not a no-till planter. We wanted to convert it to a no-till because we do a lot of no-till pumpkins. And uh, we built this extra tool uh, frame with some Yetter coulters on it. And it does really good. But anyways, what I was getting to is these twist, uh, twist uh, packing wheels. I don't know what they're called, but Yetter had never heard of this kind of planter and didn't know if it would fit. And the guy, the rep sent us a set to go on here uh, to try to make sure they would fit. And uh, they did. All we had to do was uh, make a bushing. It was a metric bolt. And we, uh, the standard bolt's half inch. So we just had a bushing and had to drill it out from tractor supply. No big deal. Uh, fit just fine. But the uh, Mater Max are sitting here. Uh, let's see, 3040 sitting out there. Oh, I guess I might as well uh, reveal the new pieces of, uh, or well, new vehicle I have, or I have acquired. Uh, I've got another truck. Uh, as y'all probably remember, I have that 96 F Blue F250 sitting up there. That's my uh, normally daily driver. Uh, I had an old pontoon boat sitting up there. Y'all may have seen it uh, in some of the videos. I have no idea, I can't remember. Uh, anyways, I didn't need that thing. I traded it for this thing. It wasn't running when I got it. Uh, it's a 1978 GM Sierra Grande with 67,000 miles on it. Uh, this is going to be hard. Uh, let's see. Let me set y'all down. Come on. Uh, anyways, I uh, threw an Elderbrock carburetor on it. Uh, I had to put a spacer on the air cleaner. Everything works on this truck that I know of. Uh, besides the air conditioner, we got to charge it. We think we might be able to still use it, just need charging. Don't know yet. Battery box was rusted out, uh, fixed that with a piece of wood. Uh, if that goes, I'm going to fix that with a piece of plate, steel plate. Uh, put an elder block on here with electric choke, wired the electric choke in because uh, it had a vacuum with a uh, quattro jet carburetor on it. Uh, so that's everything I know of under the hood. Uh, like I said, it's had 67,000 miles on it, and as you can tell, it's, in, it's been beat on, I guess you could say, beat up. Uh, the truck is really tight, and it's four-wheel drive, so that's another reason I wanted it. Uh, it's uh, My uncle had this thing. And he loaded hay in the back of it with a set of pallet forks on a tractor, and he kind of bent, dimped the bed up. Uh, it's been uh, backed into. He backed into it, backing out of the chicken house with a uh, ton truck and busted his tail light out. I got a new tail light for it. I had to straighten all this back out. Bumper's been bent, but I think I can straighten it. Uh, this tail light's got a hole in it, but I think that was to drain water, so I'm, it still works, so I'm going to leave it. I believe his truck was up north at one point in time, so because it's got a little rust in the rust places that trucks up north have. Uh, nothing I can't fix. 
I could take this quarter panel off, go to a scrap yard or junkyard and find another uh, quarter panel because they're just about universal and get me some more new quarter panels. Uh, the front end is in really, really good shape. The, tail, the bed is in not the greatest shape. Uh, but the cabin is immaculate, immaculate almost. And it also came with this toolbox, which I'm already stocking with tools. And the back window was busted out of it, and they put a piece of plexiglass in there, but you'll never see it because it's behind your head. Uh, these new door panels, um, these are cracked and dry rotted pretty bad. Uh, this one's missing the handle, so I have to roll down the window to pull the door shut every time. The bottom, the bottom half of the seat, eh, that's to be expected, but the top half is in pretty good shape. Uh, get in here. Uh, the dash has got this little crack right here, and there's a little crack right there, and there's another one right there. But another one of my uh, uncles has a chassis with a cab on it, and he said he's got a dash in there that's immaculate. So I'm gonna go get it, and he's got a transmission with the four wheel drive in it. So I'll get the transmission. So I'll have a, so I'll have a, another transmission to go in it if this one goes out. But uh, it runs good. It's missing this little shifter knob here. It drives me nuts. But uh, and of course it shows me up. But uh, she runs pretty stinking good. All I did was put that Elder Brock carburetor on it, which my grandpa had laying around, and a new set of wires and new set of plugs. The plugs were the original. I still got them laying around here somewhere. But the gap on them was about that much. I mean, it was, I'm no joke, it was humongous. I don't see how this is even running. But uh, when I first brought it home, when it was real cold, I just turned the air conditioner on just to see if it would kick in. And it does kick in when you, when it's real cold, but when it gets hot, it, you can tell it ain't got no freaking on it, so it won't kick in. But the heater works, all fan speeds work. Uh, you just gotta wait a little, switch a little, they all work. Um, the radio does work, but it's an AM radio, and the channels won't change. They won't change at all. Uh, it's got the high-low range gearbox. Needs a new uh, shifter boot here. I got a call about that. They're supposed to order it. But, uh, yeah, this thing is clean. The windshield wipers work just fine. Uh, I need a new set of windshield wipers uh, to be expected. Uh, everything works in the truck. All the lights work, the high, low beams, turn signals, the floor light down there works. If you can see that. All that works. Uh, it's a really good running truck. I mean, I'm glad I got it. But, uh, so yeah, this is a new farm beauty. Or beauty queen of the farm. This is going to be my field truck to, uh, I better turn my lights off to uh, drive to the hay field and around them instead of driving my diesel and risking it getting it stuck because it gets stuck on wet ground. Uh, we've had a lot of rain here lately. I mean a lot of rain. Uh, another thing I'm doing is working on this. This is a fuel tank off of a truck. I just actually got done washing it out. Uh, this thing was uh, gave to me and I need a fuel tank so I'm making a fuel tank out of it but I want to I want to get y'all's opinion on this I believe that fuel gauge would still work don't you I mean that, that thing's just pure brand new I mean it's just perfect peachy uh, <laughs> uh, I thought I'd put that on there give you give y'all a little kick out of that uh, yeah I thought I thought about actually putting that in my mash first and I figured it would work just fine but uh, anyways, uh, this is the big fuel pump I went down in there. I took a hammer and beat everything off of the front so that I could trace out new pieces out of quarter inch plate. And what I'm gonna do is cut me, I can't remember what size piping that is for a fuel pump. And we'll cut me a hole in this and weld that collet in there so I can put my pump in here. And this is just a plug for the uh, fuel pump or fuel gauge. So that's what I'm gonna do with this uh, to put my fuel uh, pump in there, or fuel, yeah, my fuel pump in there to make it work. So 
Anyways, I uh, think I, co I covered everything that's happening. Uh, so, anyways, I believe that's all I got for now, and I'll holler at y'all sometime again. <laughs> Excuse me, I got a little bit of sinus trouble. But, uh, hope everyone has a good evening. And stay warm and stay dry, dry down here. It's really wet down here. But, uh, anyways, we'll catch y'all on the next one. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe for more. We'll see y'all later.